vector operations. In this video, we will learn how to 1. Identify appropriate coordinate systems for solving problems with vectors. 2. Apply the Pythagorean theorem and tangent function to calculate the magnitude and direction of a resultant vector. 3. Resolve vectors into components using the sine and cosine functions. Coordinate systems in two dimensions. In one dimension motion, we used to describe the object motion along one line. The x-axis. So the object was allowed to move forward, to the right, and explained with positive direction. Or backward to the left and given a negative direction. A gecko's displacement while climbing a tree can be represented by an arrow pointing along the y-axis. The direction of the displacement of the gecko is denoted by a positive or negative sign. Two different coordinate systems. Two methods can be used to describe the motion of a butterfly moving at 1 meter per second to the northeast. In one approach, the coordinate system can be turned so that the butterfly is depicted as moving along the y-axis. One problem with this method is that the axis must be turned again if the direction of the butterfly changes. Another problem is that this method provides no way to deal with a second butterfly that is not traveling in the same direction as the first butterfly. The addition of another axis helps describe motion in two dimensions and simplifies the analysis of motion in one dimension. The butterfly motion also can be depicted on a two-dimensional coordinate system whose axes point north and east. Thus, axes are often designated using fixed directions. The positive y-axis points north and the positive x-axis points east. Determining resultant magnitude and direction. In the previous video, we found the magnitude and direction of a resultant graphically. However, this approach is time-consuming, and the accuracy of the answer depends on how carefully the diagram is drawn and measured. A simpler method uses the Pythagorean theorem and the tangent function. Using the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant. Imagine a tourist climbing a pyramid in Egypt. The tourist knows the height and width of the pyramid and would like to know the distance covered in a climb from the bottom to the top of the pyramid. Assume that the tourist climbs directly up the middle of one face. The magnitude of the tourist's vertical displacement, delta y, is the height of the pyramid. The magnitude of the horizontal displacement, delta x, equals the distance from one edge of the pyramid to the middle, or half the pyramid's width. Notice that these two vectors are perpendicular and form a right triangle with the displacement, d. The Pythagorean theorem states that for any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse the side opposite the right angle equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides, or legs. Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. c square equals a square plus b square. The Pythagorean theorem is applied to find the tourist's displacement. The square of the magnitude of the displacement is equal to the sum of the square of the horizontal displacement and the square of the vertical displacement. In this way, you can find out the magnitude of the displacement, d. Examples of using Pythagorean theorem. A hummingbird, 3.4 meters above the ground, flies 1.2 meters along a straight path. Upon spotting a flower below, the hummingbird drops directly downward 1.4 meters to hover in front of the flower. What is the hummingbird's total displacement? The answer. The hummingbird displacement from the first position to the last position. As we can see the displacement with the two movements form a triangle with the right angle. The displacement can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. The displacement d square equals 1.2 square plus 1.4 square. So, d equals the square root for 3.4. Therefore, d equals 1.8 meters. The main mast of a fishing boat is supported by a sturdy rope that extends from the top of the mast to the deck. If the mast is 20 meters tall and the rope attached to the deck 15 meters away from the base of the mast, how long is the rope? As the mast with the rope forms a right triangle with the boat floor. We can apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the rope length. We will refer to the mast length with the symbol A. And for the distance between the mast base and the rope is B the rope's length will be c. So, c square equals a square plus b square. By substituting the values, the equation becomes c square equals 20 square plus 15 square. So, c square equals 400 plus 225, and this equals 625. By taking the square root for both sides, we get c equals 25 meters. 
so the rope length is 25 meters. The helicopter takes off vertically 300 meters, then move forward 400 meters before stop hovering in the air. What is the helicopter displacement? In order to completely describe the helicopter motion, we must know the helicopter change in position which includes the helicopter displacement and direction. As the path followed by the helicopter with its displacement form a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the displacement. d square equals y square plus x square. So, d square equals 300 square plus 400 square. Therefore, d square equals 90,000 plus 160,000. d square equals 250,000. So d equals square root for 250,000. d equals 500 meters. To indicate the helicopter direction related to the x-axis, we need to find the angle theta between the displacement line and the positive x-axis. Therefore, we need to indicate the triangle's legs that we need to include in our calculation. The opposite is equivalent to y displacement, and the adjacent equals the displacement on the x-axis. For any right triangle, the tangent of an angle is defined as the ratio of the opposite and adjacent legs with respect to a specified angle of a right triangle. Tan theta equals y displacement divide x displacement. To find theta we take the inverse for both sides. So, to find the angle theta of the helicopter displacement with the x-axis, we find first the opposite for the angle theta, which equals 300 meters, and the adjacent for the angle theta is 400 meters. So, theta equals tan inverse of 300, divides 400. Therefore, theta equals 36.9 degrees. So the helicopter's final displacement equals 500 meters, with an angle of 36.9 degrees to the x-axis. Resolving vectors into components. Any vector can be resolved into two components. The x component is parallel to the x axis. And the y component is parallel to the y axis. Any vector can be completely described by a set of perpendicular components. To find the x component for a vector, draw a perpendicular line from the head of the vector to the x axis. The vector's x component then will equal the vector magnitude, multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the vector and the x axis. To find the y component for the vector, draw a perpendicular line from the head of the vector to the y axis. The vector's y component will be equal to the vector magnitude multiplied by the sine of the angle between the vector and the x axis. Example. Resolving a vector allows you to analyze the motion in each direction. This point is illustrated by examining a scene on the set of an action movie. For this scene, a plane travels at 95 km per hour at an angle of 20 degrees relative to the ground. Filming the plane from below, a camera team travels in a truck directly beneath the plane at all times. To find the velocity that the truck must maintain to stay beneath the plane, we must know the horizontal component of the plane's velocity. Once more, the key to solving the problem is to recognize that a right triangle can be drawn using the plane's velocity and its x and y components. The plane horizontal velocity equals the x component for the plane velocity, which vx equals v cosine theta. Substituting the values we get. Vx equals 95 times cosine 20, and this equals 89. So the filming truck must move with a velocity of 89 kilometers per hour to stay beneath the plane.